Welcome to Home Renovision, YouTube's favorite channel for DIY renovations. We're here to help homeowners get professional results. Today we are talking doors and window installation in the shed. Now this is going to be a lot of fun because we have two different kinds of door style. One of the main door off the front and another kind of cheater hidden door off the side. We're going to put in windows, we got to do some reframing and a couple other touch-ups on here in order to get ready. So let's get at it. This is a solid wood door, it's not a laminated panel, so it's good for exterior use. And we have finished it off with the lovely gray stain and a few coats of polyurethane, oil base, good for exterior. And we did all six sides, all right? We've really set this door up to perform well in the outdoors. Now we also have the overhang and we have it hidden the way our shed is laying. Shouldn't get too much exposure to the weather, but Always good to be a little bit more protected than necessary. The other thing we have today is a couple of simple shed windows. Bum, ba, ba, bum. This is about as simple as it gets. Folks, I think these things are around 15 bucks, all right? They do not open, they will not help you ventilate. But if you need ventilation, this shed design comes with two doors, one on each side. So you can always open those up to get a little cross breeze. This is designed strictly for getting a little daylight in there. So you can see what it is that's on your shelf when you're done. Um, also adds a little aesthetics, but you can see that the window frame versus the flange, there's a nice simple way you to cut the hole, stick them in, secure them, done. Probably the simplest window installation we're ever gonna do in our life. So we're gonna pop two of those in today, hopefully get them level and centered square and looking pretty. We're also gonna have to frame this door. We're gonna reframe, I'm gonna show you a little cheat for doing exterior door jams. So stay with us, we got a lot to go through and hopefully we get it right. So there are basically two approaches to sticking in a window and it's all design driven, right? One of them is you put your window where the top of the window casing, which is what we're gonna call this for lack of a better word, and the top of the door casing are all in a nice straight line. Now in a shed, that leaves that window way the heck up here like that. And if you wanna go with that design, that's fine, you could. What I would suggest is just put a nice long board temporarily attached across the top and do all your measurements from that. But I like things simple and this is a shed. So we're gonna stay simple. And the way I'm gonna measure these off is I'm gonna just put it on the ground. This is roughly the center line and I'm gonna just drill this. <laughs> all right, there we go. So what I'm doing here is I'm just establishing my low point and I'll do the same thing on the other side. All right, there we go. Now we have the height of our windows established. <laughs> we have a rough idea where our center line is. Now what we need to do is measure how big a hole we're actually cutting here. So this window is actually 36 and a quarter top to bottom. So we're gonna go like this, 36, and we'll go a half the bottom of the hole, just so we have a little flexibility to make sure they're balanced out. There's the top of my window, and I'll put a hole there as well, because the idea here is I want to trace my hole for my window on the other side of the wall, and then cut it from back there. So I just want to get a couple of these holes to identify where my stopping lines are. Because as long as I'm on the outside, I can't tell exactly where my center line is. This is just a rough to mitt for now, okay? There we go, let's do the other side. And then drop that down up here. All right. Now the trick with these little windows here, guys, is the, uh, the outside flange. It actually is, is just a little bit too big to fit inside this cavity. But the inside of this flange will have no problem at all, all right? So what we want to do is we want to measure off and cut this line somewhat level, somewhat. Because the goal here, since I have a full inch overhang, goal here is to cut the size of this window out and then put a piece of two by four pressure treated lumber in, slide it overlapping the outside board, and then we'll stick the window in the hole. It's not that much rocket science involved here because we have so much mercy. I'm not even going to bother measuring. I'm just going to cut. Now, because my window is actually 12 and a quarter and my gap is 14 and a half, 
I have, let's call it two inches of, of extra space. So, yeah. I'm going to just do this. That represents my one inch gap on each side. And 12 and a quarter. So I'm going to cut on the outside of those. Now I can't use a skill saw here unless I drill the four corners out then I can cut from the other side. And that is what I'm going to do because using a reciprocator in this situation really is frustrating and slow and tedious. So let's drill our four corners now. Wow that is really noisy. All right, now I got my safety gear on. Time to get some work done. Wait a minute. I can't see a damn thing with all this safety gear on. <laughs> all right, just having a little fun. Man, we get enough safety trolls in the comments. I tell you, what is this world coming to? Now I am gonna just draw this line good old fashioned way. Now, I just thought I'd point this out. What I'm doing here is I'm lining it up. I know everything's square and level. That includes all these lines on the shed. So I just start and I find a, a mark on my guard here that lines up with something that's pre-existing. And then I just keep that line straight. Makes this really quite simple. There, that's a hole. All we gotta do now is do the same thing with the other side. It's a little violent, but it worked! Yay! Oh! Now, all I really want to do here, folks is just check to see if they're about the same distance off the ground from the line that I cut. And if it is, then I'm in great shape. 76 and a quarter. I know, I'm not gonna risk it. There we go. Do do do. 76 and a quarter. <laughs> I don't have that in millimeters for you, but <laughs> maybe one of these days I'll buy a new tape where I can have both measurements. It might be more handy for some of our viewers overseas. I am uh, just going to cut a couple pieces of wood here where the bottom of the window is going to go. That'll assist me in sealing it up nice and tight. I'm still using this technique. I don't care what people say on the internet. There's nothing that's not safe about this. This does not kick back if you keep your blade square, folks. Kickback happens when you twist the blade. Then it runs backwards. Never kicks back when you're keeping it square. You know what? And to be honest with you, if you're concerned about kickback on a skill saw, maybe you shouldn't be using the tool. <laughs> if you can't hold it and keep it from kicking back, I wouldn't pick it up in the first place. Oh, kickback! <laughs> Just wanted to go real quick because it's a shed we don't have too much concern about a whole lot of things one of them being water penetration everything that we're doing as far as our finishing technique is going to get an exterior sealant and it's a polyurethane sealant which is going to be bonding awesome with all the different wood products and plastic products we have here so that's why we're using it um, I'm already planning on using a polyurethane exterior sealant, so I'm not thinking that it's necessary to wrap everything. Uh, this is not a new house I expect to last two, three, four hundred years. Just want to get 40 years out of a decent shed. So the window is front heavy and it'll keep wanting to fall out on you. 
So just push it into the one corner. All the resistance up against that cut lumber, it's not going anywhere. Thank God I made it inside before it fell on the ground. Now, we're gonna just center it in the hole because this is designed to be centered with this construction. Remember back when we framed the building, we measured from the center of, the, of this wall to this stud. So what I wanna do is I wanna have this perfectly centered in this, in this cavity, and we'll do the same with the other window. Now to keep this from moving around on us, I just wanna get one screw in here. Now, it can't fall out even if it wants to. And that is good enough for now. The other thing we can do, now we can pull it forward and drill one in. We'll just start from there. There we are. And these three screws will keep this in place until we get our exterior sealant on. Once that sealant's on, this window's not going anywhere. Window number two. There we go. Good. Windows are done. So the main door, as we all know, we changed our design to go from a barn door, which, you know, sounded sexy in the beginning, but let's face it, uh, the more we thought about it, the more we realized it's not, not very functional. In high winds and winter time with animals, with everything, it's just, it's not going to work. So it's just the wrong choice for the shed. So we actually have this framed as a 32 inch interior hole so that we could put a 34 or 36 door on the outside originally, but we actually have an actual 32 inch door now. So this hole is too small. It doesn't allow for the operation and we need to have at least an eighth of an inch on each side in order to do that. Now, if we had nailed this frame together, we could mark on our plate, take out our sledgehammer and just beat this over and those nails that were in there would actually bend and allow that wood to pass over and then we could just tighten it down and we'd be fine, but we use screws. So now I've got to actually cut this plate out where the screws are and then reinstall a new plate, new studs. So that works for me. What I am going to do is I'm going to measure, because I'm going to use these studs over. I'm going to measure uh, eighth of an inch. Just going to mark my mark just a little bit to the side of where this stud is now. Okay, and here's what we're going to do. We're going to cut these loose and we're going to install this stud so that this edge here is in line with that. And then I'll put in a new pressure treated two by four. That'll double it up. We'll reverse the, the natural bow in the wood so it stays nice and straight. And then we'll be able to install our door directly to that. Once we're done that, we'll cut out the plate and we'll start hinging our door. So hopefully this goes really simple. Here we go. And the way that you get the maximum amount of effect here is by pushing this plate up against the, the wood, okay? If your sawzall is loose, then the blade will catch things and then your, your machine will bounce back and forth. The blade isn't moving. But if you keep, that's why this is such a big solid piece of steel. If you keep that pressed against something, then the blade's doing all the work. There we go. Generally screws, uh, they have a weaker shear strength than a nail. So cutting off the top isn't necessary. We should be able to just wiggle these back and forth and they'll break loose from the screws on top. All right, so we're gonna hammer the sheathing. And what that does is it pulls the nail out. And if you hit the sheeting just under the nail, it'll put the sheeting back, sliding against the nail of the shaft, shaft of the nail, sorry. Exposing the head. And then you can just use the claw to pull it out. So let's see if this works now. Here we go. Left and right and left and right. And pop. Here we go. And now we're going to demonstrate the weakness of the screw and the shear strength. We're going to show you here. I got my black marker now on that stud. My... Doo -doo -doo. And that is perfect.
So here's the option that we have. If this is the outside of my building, all right, and this represents my, my door stud, I have this stuff exposed all the time because I'm not going to be installing a jam system here. That to me is just a whole lot of extra work and it's not necessary. But if I have this stud and then I cut this board flush to that and then I have this, if this was the outside of the shed, just assume my pressure treated is sitting a little proud here, so it's flush. Then when I put on my casing, I have weatherproof material on all sides. And I'm not going to have the sheathing exposed to the elements as they sneak in between the door during rainstorms and stuff. So this is what we're going to do. We're actually going to cut the sheathing at this point, all right, and then install our jacks, because this is the king, this will be the jack. Of course, it'll be longer, I'll cut them fresh, but we'll put our header pronounced and I'll put our jacks pronounced, and then we will install our door on that. I think we'll get a much better result. I think I'm gonna make this mention in the video here. If you're going to build the shed and you're gonna use this design as your blueprint, and you're putting in a door like we are, and you wanna follow the system, let's just map this out. Our door is 32 by 80 inches. That means we want to have probably a half an inch at the ground so we can put in some sort of a sweeper. So that takes it to 80 and a half and then you want a quarter inch until your, let's call it our jam. That's 80 and three quarters. Okay. All right. Now 80 and three quarters there is until your header. Okay. So mark 80 and three quarters. That's the beginning of the header. Your header is going to be inch and a half. Okay. And so then that'll go all the way across your space. And then afterwards, we're going to put a one by three pressure treated casing that we're going to custom make out of our, our deck boards. And then that'll close the gap and get a nice seal on the top. So if you're making this at home, just remind yourself 83 and a quarter is the door hole. Okay. And then you're going to have a two by four header. And then we're going to use the trim to get up to contact with this surface and then seal it with our polyurethane. That'll give us a pretty good 40 year door. All right. Now, now as we're done, we're going to get cutting. Might as well take a little off there. It's not going to hurt. One of the beautiful things about a nice new Sawzall blade is that it's nice and sharp on the tip. And if it gets bent while you're using it, just use the claw, the hammer, straighten it out. So what we're going to do is we're just going to rest it here and you'll see the extension that it goes out and comes back in is about an inch and a half. So if you're going to plunge cut, which is what this is, be careful. Don't start at the corner. You might go too high and then you'll have a nasty mess outside. It's easier to start somewhere where it's comfortable where you can see. And then we can cut down and then cut back up. Okay. That's crazy. <laughs> the other technique is use your skill saw. Set the depth on your blade to that of your material, plus a little bit. Now this, it doesn't matter if you cut into your stud a little bit here, that'll be fine. And then, like I said, since this is all pretty much square and level, and we're gonna be going with the casing, we can mark this where our cut is. So I'm just putting that black mark on the saw there so it's easier to see. Pull back the guard, set my black mark on my material. Well, that's a lot easier.
Ah, well, that worked. Doesn't seem like the greatest technique. If you got a better idea, let me know. Now it's time to cut the plate out. This was great when we were building our shed, keeping everything square and level, but now that it's been attached to the concrete, we don't need the plate anymore. Ta-da! And the answer to the question, no, I can't use that plate as the header. Because the sawzall actually takes about one eighth of an inch off each side. So now it's a full quarter short. So I'm going to measure this one. 35 and 7 eighths. Sweet. All right, so, so 80 and 3 quarters, there we go, and these are my jack studs. The reason they're called jack studs is because jacks hold things up. This is what you rest the header on. I know a lot of people think that it's like something to do with a deck of cards, but never heard of a queen stud before. Perfect. Now, what you want to do here is take a look down your wood. Okay? You'll see this board has got a little bit of a curve to it. All right? So I'm taking that curve and I'm going to install it against the wall so that it curves into the door. All right? You'll see that there. Then I'm going to screw through the face, tie everything together, and that'll help keep that wood here nice and straight. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to pull this forward flush off the building. Flush there. Whew. It's got a bit of a warp in a couple of different spots. We'll start here and then we'll manipulate it. It's kind of nice not working in that 40 degree heat, eh? Now this board, of course, has got some twists and turns in it. Okay, that one's actually pretty straight. Let's get our factory edge right on the concrete. Now we install the header. be a good time to test your door that it's going to fit the opening, okay? Now, we got plenty of room up top. We're going to have about a half inch on the bottom when we're done. And we have about a half inch overall dealing with this. But, there we go. Now it's time to put our door on, so we actually went out to the store earlier and picked up a couple of gate kits where they're both the same. This one, the one on the other side. We're going to finish this off in some grays and blacks and kind of dark tones, very modern look. So we figured we'd get the black hardware. It'll work out well. Now, this is all surface mounted. So it mounts on the surface of the door, and then the surface that is mounting on should be flush with the outside of the door. Trick, right? Because right now, this is a little bit too ugly <laughs> to mount anything on. Remember, our intention here was to come back and put a casing on this that's also pressure treated. So, having said all of that, oh, also, really nice decorative big handles. So what we're going to use for our casings is our deck boards. Now, these are one inch thick, five and a half inch wide actual dimension. So what we're going to do is we're going to rip down our boards at three and a quarter inches. 
And then the balance of that is two and a quarter so that when we put them together on the outside of our walls, two and a quarter, sorry, the three and a quarter inch board and the two and a quarter here, the, the dimension to the outside corner is three and a quarter on both pieces. That's really simple to do. So we're gonna use that as our, as our template for all of the trims and moldings here. So we'll have some two and a quarter across the top to close off the gap. And around our door, we're gonna use three and a quarter inch molding. Nice and fat, and it's gonna do a great job. So because this is kind of finished carpentry, we're gonna change the blade on our saw. And I love this saw for this reason. It's so easy to change the blade. All I do is I push down this little spot here. Bring the guard forward. Make sure it's not plugged in, of course. Yeah, this is crazy if it's plugged in. Put the wrench on that's already hidden in the handle. Loosen that, and then you just take it off with your fingertips. There are a lot of designs of saws out there that are not this handy. Or they come with a wrench, but they don't have a place to store it in the tool and end up losing it. I've done that a thousand times. Okay, and we're gonna switch that blade out. Now that one was a really fine tooth blade. I think it was a 60 tooth. I've been using it for a long time for everything. And it has just about worn out its usefulness. So when you want something done and the finish look is oh so important, best to just get a new blade. 15 or 20 bucks goes a long way. And same thing. Well, if you have the guard on, you can't grab the nut. When you have the guard off, you expose the teeth. That's why I suggest, uh, there you go. Get that back where you aren't gonna lose it. And then off we go. Now, just a suggestion, save your old blades. Sometimes these come in really handy if you have a hole in the floor when you're building something. You can use this as a plate protector against electrical or plumbing lines. <laughs> All right, so here's my five quarter board. All right, what I've done is I've just put a sheet of plywood down on my little bench saw, my bench ladder, and I'm gonna overhang this stuff really extremely long, and I'm going to just screw it in place in a few spots. The idea here is to screw this in place so that I can have both of my hands free to do the cutting. Of course, if you have a table saw, go ahead and use it. Uh, but if you don't, the way you do it is you set up three and a quarter. Oh, that's three and a quarter. I'm going to put my thumb there. I'm going to run my index finger right next to it. Okay. And I'm going to use my index finger as my guide. We're lined up. We're going to cut this off at three and a quarter. And then the, the remainder is screwed to this table with my lumber on it. It's not going to go anywhere. This is perfectly safe in most countries in the world. Now, using screws to hold this down isn't going to hurt anything. We're going to be using the same fasteners to install the trim boards later anyway. Rolling. So now we've got our two pieces cut down. And just for aesthetics, we're going to set it back, you know, eighth to a quarter. Just so we have a nice little edge there. And we're going to put one screw into the jack and one into the king. Keep it on nice and tight. Okay, so Jack and King, Jack and King, every, I don't know, 20 inches or so. It sets me up with about four screws. Now we have a pressure treated casing, weatherproof, a pressure treated jack, weatherproof, a solid wood door, polyurethane, over and over and over and over again, weatherproof. We got a shed door system that's gonna last a long, long, long time. And I believe we're even gonna paint this thing. Man, oh man. So we just got back from lunch, and lo and behold, lo and behold, um, a contractor was in the parking lot building some sheds, some of the kits that they sell online. 
So, you know, we couldn't help ourselves. We were so curious to go out and see what they were offering. And sure enough, you know, he's got the same uh, exterior wallboard. And uh, most of the framework on the back wall and the front wall in the shed that was similar to this one was 2x4, but it's 24 inch on center, not 16. And the roof, it was uh, 2x4. Um, the rest of the framing it was like a kite. Just a couple of sticks, 2x3s. Everything's designed to kind of get uh, nailed together. If you haven't had the opportunity to look at this video yet, there's one online with a guy actually assembling the kit from the hardware store. And uh, I remember watching the video going, wow, that doesn't look very solid. In person, it's actually scary. There is uh, not too many places on earth where I would expect that to last more than a few years without getting blown away. So from now on, I'm not going to refer to them as the, uh, the box store sheds. I'm going to call them the box kites. <laughs> the crazy thing is, is the, the exterior paneling, that's only primed and it's designed to get a paint job, using the same product, but all of the framework is just regular spruce. There's, not a, there's no pressure treated anywhere. There's all kinds of exposed pine. <sighs> there's just areas all over the place where it's going to just rot, 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 rot. Uh, you know, they look cute from the street, right? But for the price, you can build this thing that's like 1500 bucks all in, including the pad, or you can go buy a really cheap kite shed for a little bit more than that. And then you have to follow the instructions and hopefully everything that's pre-cut and ready to be assembled. And then there's no structure to it. You can't actually hang anything off the walls. Might as well just buy a tarp. So the secret to doing this kind of a door frame, and let's be fair, whenever you're doing uh, pressure treated lumber, finishing trims, every time you make a cut, it's gotta be bigger than what you need, okay? This stuff has a tendency to dry and it's gonna get a little smaller. So what I like to do is measure the outside. I'm 39 and three quarters. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut a different design. So we're gonna draw a little demonstration here. Here's a door, okay. And here's my casing, all right? Okay, there we go, freehand, loving it. Here across the top, I want to go past the outside edge, okay? Almost like a little bit of an Asian influence with that kind of a finished look, all right? Because when everything starts to dry, you want that overhang. If you cut it square or try to miter, it's going to dry and it's going to look stupid forever and ever and ever. So if you go long on purpose, don't just go square long, okay? That just shows a little lack of creativity. Put a little bit of an angle on it at least. All right, have a little bit of fun here. I mean, this is the main entrance. Got to sex it up a little bit. And once you got your piece cut, you know. Now they're dealing with finish trim. But don't be afraid to pull out a sanding sponge. I love these things. They take the contour of anything you're sanding. And I'm not looking for making it really perfect. I'm just looking to get uh, some of these raw, rough edges off because when I'm using a skill saw as a ripping saw, it's not perfect. But. Nobody's going to see that from my house. Now initially we wanted a half inch gap at the bottom. I'm looking around. <laughs> to my amazement, I don't have any half inch material. I have three eighths, I got five eighths, I got three quarters. So I'm going to start at three eighths. We're going to just set the door in visually and inspect and see how we feel about this. <laughs> Don't let it fall in. Now, we're using gate hardware here, which is not manufactured perfectly because gates aren't perfect. So you're going to have to just accept the fact that nothing is going to be perfect here. What you want to do is set up the, the middle of the cylinder right off the edge of the door and then attach your screws. Yeah, that one's going in a bit of an angle. Big surprise. Now, the way you solve this is by pre-drilling your holes or put the screw on reverse to start the hole. All right, there we go. This needs a little resistance here. 
right? And then we want to square this off. And that's just because these are such a coarse thread, right? Having it on reverse burns the tip into the wood so that it sets the hole straight in and out. Even the one that ended up on an angle, you can fix it by burning it in. Okay, so now we take the door, stick it on our 3 8 So now we have our airspace. Okay, so we're gonna start flush. And from here we're gonna eyeball. I have about a half an inch gap. I wanna split the difference. So what I'm gonna do, take my door, slide it over about a quarter. Now that I got my gap where I like it, I'm gonna put my screw in, same thing. You wanna burn this in. If you don't burn it in, this wood will end up splitting because the three screws are about the same grain spot. That will make sure that these three screws this close together near the edge of a grain won't end up cracking and splitting off over time. Or you can pre-drill all your holes. I just find this a whole lot easier. Release our panel. I'm going to use this nail here as a wedge so I can open up a consistent gap across this while I'm drilling my hole. Now this little tool here is awesome. I use this when I'm installing door handles so that you don't burn them Burn the side of the handle. You know how it gets, eh? Those brush metal handles. You get your drill bit on there, it always rubs up. So also make sure that the bit doesn't fall off the screw. Woohoo! Nice. So because we have materials that expand and contract, we can install this door stop here. And that way you don't see the door when it's closed. The gap. Way to get that in the right spot is to measure the door. This door is inch and a half. Make your mark, okay, inch and a half. Now because we're using surface mounted gate hardware, we want the door in this case to be perfectly flush. So I'm just gonna line this up on my mark. And, there we go. Now I'll close the door. And what'll happen here is if it's out of alignment, just closing that door will straighten everything out. Okay. Now wherever it's laying is where I'll throw my screws. So we have two kinds of hardware here. One is gonna be the latch, okay? And the idea here is it sits there and, and, and the door will latch into it. And this will keep the door from opening by itself, okay? This is like wind control. And this is so you got something to open it with. So, we're gonna set this up based on these panels, you know, above this area. And we'll set the latch off the middle of the door here. So the first thing is to get this attached. Now, you have two screws. You wanna get them on your door and have enough latch so you can actually make contact. Usually leaves the front screw pretty close to the front of the door. This is one of the reasons why you want a solid wood door. Set your screw up. There we go. Now, burn that thing in backwards. Really important that screw goes in straight. And let's get this nice and horizontal. The danger here is a lot of times these screws are made with softer metal. So pre-drilling might not be a bad option if you don't have a great little gizmo like this. 
All right, what I'm gonna do with my black marker now is I'm gonna attach the door to this hardware and line this up. Now you don't want it to the very far extent. Things might tend to move a little bit. So come in a little bit like this, all right? Top and bottom, you see you don't have any mercy there. You can't go any higher. Split the difference, okay? Bring it in nice and tight. Now make your mark where all four holes go. This time, you gotta be perfect. Start the hole with a nail in the direction that you want the screw to be driven. Okay, on an angle towards the middle. Coming up or coming down. This will help make sure that this thing stays where you want it. And when you're driving your screws, they'll go exactly where you want and they won't be manipulated by the grain of the wood. Remember, the Phillips bit screw head, as soon as the tip has any resistance, because the head is the way it is, it'll just bend on you to follow the resistance of the tip. So you really got to be planning in advance to make sure that you aren't going to run into problems here. Get the hardware in place. Start to see these screws before you finish driving them in. Because if anything isn't going the way you want, you can manipulate the bracket by finishing off one of the screws. Now because they're going at an angle, as soon as one side of the screw makes contact with the plate, stop screwing or you'll shear the head right off. That's why the whole screw is black. Whoops, a little too hard. Okay, there we go. Now this handle comes with nut and bolt assembly for going on like fence boards. So what we're going to do is we're going to buy a few screws that are hopefully already black. If not, we'll put them in some cardboard and spray paint them. But we're going to mount this one here and the same one on the other door. Wonderful thing about this latch, it's uh, security. Because it has this little padlock thing here. All right, if you want to change out these little Phillips screws with some really long screws, um, you could, okay? And then you can put a padlock on here. The, I don't know, what else to say? It's a door. I think it's pretty. I think it works. Yep, definitely works. There you go. An all season outdoor shed door. Gotta love it. Well, this video is getting a little bit too long, so we're gonna add the how to do the other door into the next video. And if you're interested in seeing the other aspects of this construction, check out our playlist on how to build a shed. Thanks for joining us on the doors and windows segment. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to our channel, then please do so. We'd love to have you around for all of our video productions. We put out videos every single week and we answer our comments still. Yes, I know I'm up every morning at 5.30 taking care of business. So looking forward to seeing what you have to ask and what you have to say. I like to get new information, so if you've got better ways to do things, by all means, share it with the community. We'll see you again soon.